Welcome back, everyone. We're here for video number three of three. And this is my favorite, favorite part, which is personalization and how to do it. Nate's going to jump into some really awesome detail and some more advanced scrubbing things. So Nate here is from Inbox Attack. Take it away, Nate. All right. Thanks for the intro, Sujin. Uh, I'm Nate from Inbox Attack. I've been helping people send better emails and make money off of emails for close to a decade now. Uh, both doing it for them and teaching them how to do it. And Susan and I connected uh, last year and have been collaborating on a lot of things. And this is the area that will make you money or make you lose money when you're sending cold emails. And this is an area that truthfully is the reason people fail at cold email. Uh, even more than the copywriting, this, this personalization, either not personalizing or not personalizing correctly, have crushed many people's email campaigns. So we're going to dig into some of the ways that we approach it. So in this video, we're going to talk about merge tags. You know, and this, and this, this is a part three of a three-part series. And... You know, we looked at acquiring the emails, acquiring the information using scraping tools or ads. We also looked at scrubbing those emails to make sure they're valid to protect your, your online and digital reputation. Now, when you're collecting and acquiring the information, you usually get more info with it. First name, maybe the company they're with, maybe their industry, depending upon where you got the info from. LinkedIn will give you, you know, hundred fields worth of information off of a, you know, a connection. It could be a bit overwhelming at times, but understanding how to leverage those columns of data and that spreadsheet will make you more money, period. It will absolutely make you more money. And of course, <laughs> make you more money if you have something that's worth money. All right. The most common merge tag that you see is the first name. You know, hello, first name, how could I help you today? Now, I'm gonna go back to that for a sec. First names are wildly overused in campaigns. I have done A-B tests, testing, including a first name and that opening line and not including one. And it's been a bit inconclusive. It varies industry to industry. Uh, a lot of it has to do with what content comes afterwards, whether people believe that it's real personalization. And in the world of cold email, sometimes you know, you're not on a first name basis with that person yet. Well, we'll get into more on that in a little bit here. So our favorite merge tags that we use, a merge tag, the easiest way to explain it is a separate column in your spreadsheet. So you have a column for email addresses, you have a column for their name, you have a column for their industry, you may have a phone number in there, which is useless in email, but I, tip, I see those all the time on, on email lists. Company name, this is my, my favorite merge tag to use. It's my favorite merge tag to use, and I, I use it a lot in subject lines. Like you see here, you know, we're helping out, you know, helping out ABC Plumbing. And I use it a lot in the body. Sometimes I'll do both. Sometimes I'll use it in the subject line and in the body. You know, our solution could help cut ABC Plumbing's administrative workload in half. Now keep in mind that when you're prepping your email list, to keep in mind what will happen if you have other words around it. Like in the case of a possessive, so companies, you know, the apostrophe S, it really helps if you have that email template in front of you while you're doing it, just to sanity check it as you go. And we'll get more into our approach for sanity checking your list uh, here in a bit. This one, I'm afraid I'm giving out too many of my secrets today. This is one that has helped like double and triple conversion rates on a lot of our cold email campaigns is, is clustering together similar companies. So if I'm sending out a campaign to people in eight different industries and I have projects in my portfolio with companies in those eight different industries, I'll include that in the spreadsheet. So everyone that is in the automotive industry, for example, will have Ford and Audi put into 
the similar company's column in the spreadsheet. So I'll go through the spreadsheet and fill in big chunks of these examples. If it's healthcare, I'll, I'll include a hospital or maybe a surgery clinic. You know, if it's a SaaS company, I'll include two or three SaaS companies. So when you're loading up your sheet, having a list of people that you've worked with, and the, you can even name drop here too, if it's somebody famous uh, or someone that they'll know, you can name drop as well. Uh, this is very, very effective. It takes some time. You're getting it loaded up in the spreadsheet, totally worth it if you have clients in their industry. If you don't and you're trying to break into a new industry, I wouldn't use this tactic. Speaking of industry, the industry name itself is important to use. Notice in this example that I made it lowercase and I got a bit more specific. You know, I see that you're in the sales and marketing industry like me, not effective. I see that you own an agency like these eight other clients that I have that you know, own a marketing agency. Like getting that level of specificity there is really, really important. Sometimes you're not going to have it. Sometimes you won't have enough granularity and you'll have to guess and that's okay too. But I typically load that up as a separate column and I make it sure it's all done in lowercase because it works better blended in with the sentence. If I made capital, capital I there, it would not work at all because it would look like I'm trying to trick them <laughs> and that's not okay. Category. The category merge tag is really, really helpful for doing influencer outreach. So influencer outreach is when you send a cold email to someone that has more influence than you do in the form of social media reach or, or publishing power if they are a journalist or a podcaster or a power blogger or a YouTube influencer. Really, really effective to include the space that they're serving. So this is not to be confused with industry. This is the, the topic of discussion. This is what they write about, what they publish, what they talk about. And in this case here, once again, notice the category, lowercase. You know, I've done a lot of searching in the drone space. And I love, love, love your work on the Drones Are Us podcast. Blending it in like that. And I added podcast name in there just as a, as a bonus because that's how you would use it. And also notice that there's no all caps in here. Oftentimes when you're pulling down, like scraping data, company names, industry categories, first names will be in all caps. Pay attention to that in your spreadsheets before you load it into a platform. Pay very close attention to it. First name we talked about a little bit before. One of the things that Mailshake does is it gives you the option to pull in first name or first name and last name into the actual, into the from name and to name in, in the block. So if I'm sending this to Nate at inboxattack.com, instead of just having the email address, we'll have my first name in there too, which helps a lot with open rates. I use it in opening lines, but down here in the body section, sometimes I won't use it in the opening. I'll use it in a close. Hey, hey, thanks again, Sujan, for giving this a serious look. I've used that successfully in many, many cold email campaigns. Another one to look at if you're doing territories, uh, so salespeople that may be watching this or, or people that are supporting sales teams, this is really, really helpful. Now, when you're prepping the list, getting specific about region or city is very important. And oftentimes, if you don't have a lot of clients or a lot of customers in your business and can't name drop as, oh, I have a bunch of customers in Topeka, then use the region. You know, I've got customers up and down the Midwest. Uh, or if you want to get specific and you're on a, on a metro level, name drop the neighborhood. You know, Soto, uh, Upper Park. You know, I used to live in Seattle, so you know, Capitol Hill. And you can even shorten it to how a local would use it. Cap Hill, Greenwood, Green Lake, all the different neighborhoods and boroughs, if you will. It is really, really effective and makes people feel like you're one of them. Last one, PS blocks. When you're closing out an email, it, anything you could say to prove that you actually have done your research is effective. So I usually save that for the end and I'll put something that they have done. Uh, for example, it could be, you know, hey, 
I just saw that you were uh, featured in PS Block. In that case, it would be you were featured in Ink Magazine. Good on you, man. All right, good on you. That was that's awesome. Uh, so if you if you and it's a way of psychologically giving a little bit of a back scratch. So if you have a blank, if you have a blank in your spreadsheet, you definitely want to use an email platform that has a, a fallback text, has a backup plan. And some email platforms have it. Some e email platforms don't. Mailshake. Uh, has an option in here for that. So this is the most common use. So it's like, instead of like, hey, Nate, if the first name field is blank for that person, it would just be, hey there. Uh, be very careful with punctuation when you use this though. So sometimes I'll include the punctuation in the fallback text, sometimes I won't, depending upon what's surrounding it. Super, super important to pay attention to the punctuation though, because having a space before your comma, is just gonna interrupt the flow. So here's the tough part. All of this advice I'm dropping involves time. The more time you invest in doing that human sanity check of your list before you send to them, the better your results will be, period. It is a direct proportion. So this is an example from an actual email blast that we did. And, I, and you can see that we've shortened the company name to be something you could actually use in a sentence. You're never gonna say it's like, oh man, I really think I could rock things for Tabs Group Inc. You know, or uh, the Bottle Rocket Marketing Group Unlimited really, really needs to hire us for X, Y, and Z reasons. So shorten it up into something that you would use in conversation. So you shorten it to something and that includes shortening things into acronyms. Like I, I see this a lot in college campaigns. People will spell out the whole thing and it's clearly, it's like, yeah, I think that, you know, my product would be a great addition to the University of California, Los Angeles athletic department staff. That is way too long. No, it's UCLA. So take the time to prep the lists, make it human, pay attention to all caps, pay attention to punctuation, Anything that's going to interrupt the flow. This little bit of prep work here is a game changer when you're sending cold emails. Yeah, Nate, just to quickly interrupt there, um, this can also be outsourced on Upwork, right? This can also be, oh, yeah. you can also use kind of uh, outsource or virtual assistants to help you with this. But these last two things that Nate mentioned, um, I have a study done from Scaled, S-K-A-L-E-D. Uh, the sales consulting group pretty much said that double the, you can get double the performance if you do the last two things you mentioned, double the performance. Yeah. It's about a, it's a lot of work, but double guys. So anyways, just want to make sure I mentioned that and emphasize the fact that this is the, the human check, the, cause no one ever says university of California, Los Angeles. Nobody ever says a California part, right? Like it's just weird to say. So UCLA. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so th those things can help quite a bit. Awesome. Well, it's nice to hear someone else agrees with me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, well, one little quick note on here. Notice in, in that second row on this spreadsheet that the company name was misspelled. That happens a lot too. People misspell their own company names on websites. That happens all of the time. So check for the misspellings too. Sometimes I'll leave misspellings in my copy just to prove that it's human, but that's done deliberately. Uh, when you're dealing with merge tags, make sure the spelling's right, seriously. I can't tell you how many times I've spelled milk, mail shake as milkshake because autocorrect beat me to the punch. So, all right, guys, <laughs> this, is the, this is the end of the third video. Subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions. Nate and I will be actively monitoring this stuff and um, you know, watch our other videos as well. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ping Nate at inboxattack.com. Um, he does an awesome, pretty much everything email service. So if you have any questions, ping him. And of course, you can always ping me as well, sujin at mailshake.com. That's it. Take care.